you guys welcome back to my channel i am super sorry that i couldn't get any videos out most of last week but i officially did get one out and i really hope you enjoyed that video right now i'm back in any and okay um so next I want to talk about something. I want to talk about more Skippy Doing the Risk Kids because, you know, I seem to be taking a break from that. Well, I need to get it back on track. So, well, I think you already know what my title's going to be because I also kind of wrote it. And, um, this is a comment off of YouTube. And, well, I'm having my lap top open and well um whatever let's just go okay how many guys have watched at least one scooby-doo tv show or movie in your life entire life i bet most of you i've got 10 months for the kids that instantly yell scooby-doo reference number 10 this one particular can be seen in episode 13 called the turtle james army and sarah go on a boat to report what's happening or something along the lines, whatever, I forgot. And was it Sarah sees the clone go sea monster? Because that's what they called it before. And James said, we should get a closer look at it. After a round, we was like, we should be getting away from it. Bam. There you guys have it. That's some real Scooby-Doo talk right there. I was like, when to spit my kick-up bar out. It's just so shocking. I mean, what all with livery skits and Scooby-Doo? Something is definitely happening to where the characters immediately reference Scooby-Doo. I'm talking about the Liberty Skates characters. And just don't take my word for it. Watch two of doing Liberty Skates, then compare and contrast the two shows. You're just finally know something that will make your jaw drop. Let's face it, when I first called Liberty Skates referencing Scooby Doo, my mouth almost dropped open. See, you should never underestimate the power of the Liberty Skates and Scooby Doo. Number 9. This one happened during episode 4. It starts off with the honoree asking they were to their destination, and he mentioned that he's hungry. Which is typically normal for a character to be hungry if you on the road for a week. But this is what made me almost fall off the couch. Again, I was not here in my hometown. I was up in Michigan. So, yeah. I know why I said couch. Alright. I lost it. Okay. Here we go. Jim said, you're always hungry. I honestly don't know how long I can go on like this. I'm sorry. It's just... When James said that to him, I immediately almost fangirled right there at the TV. There's no denying that these two shows obviously have some sort of connection between each other. Number eight, this scene happened during episode during episode one towards the end. I was awake, but what really woke me up inside was the fact that Henri said this to James. I'll fight you. I'm sorry, I got a pause for two reasons. A notification and B got a scroll. For the drumstick, which could have I'll fight you for the drumsticks with which could have been a reference to Scooby to Scooby Doo book called Scooby Doo and the Invisible Android. In the book I published in two thousand one, one flippin' year before Liberty Kids ever made their premiere on PBS Kids. Yeah. Number seven. This really should come as a surprise to anyone, since not everyone knows that Henri knows how to find trouble. It's true he's been labeled as a magnet for trouble, but I heard something similar in the two thousand seven Scooby Doo film, which was Chill Out Scooby Doo. Daphne said, "Those two always know how to find trouble." So, even though the scooby -Doo movie came out in 2007, the first iteration of Scooby-Doo actually came out in 1969. Again, I'm calling that part from Liberty Kids a reference to Scooby-Doo. No exceptions. So, speaking of trouble, remember the early episodes of Scooby-Doo where are you, Scooby and Shaggy sometimes wouldn't help out, and then Fred, Daphne, and Velma had to get on each other to get on to them both? Well, it's the same thing with Liberty Kids. In episode 15, Sarah and James asked three questions regarding if Henry caused some tr sort of trouble or not. I'm calling that the ultimate reference, but I'm not done yet. Number five. I'm just rolling. James asked Henri in episode nine if there was ever a time when Henri wasn't angry or not. And it's only when he's in it. Now, the reason why I chose this reference is obvious to the fact that it's a little something to do with number four. <coughs> Sorry, just something caught me. I mean, the rope. Anyways. The rest of the Scooby Doo gang might have asked when there was a time when Scooby Doo and Jaguar were on. And yeah, definitely one of those two were eating. 
Number four, Henri is known to be hungry throughout the entire series. There's actually a couple times when he's lost his appetite due to whatever reason. You can be seen in her episodes Liberty or Death and Bug Hill. Don't worry, there are times known to people in Scooby-Doo and Shaggy are always hungry. Just watch that one part from Scooby-Doo, Legend of the Fanzor, and you'll see the resemblance. Three, remember when we talked about episode 13? Yeah, there was one thing I forgot to add. And that's saying James was actually acting like Fred. And Henri was acting like Shaggy. Although Henri was acting like Shaggy plenty of times before to be actually certified as a quote-unquote coincidence. Because I don't think it really is a coincidence. Number two. If everyone's having to notice, congrats. But then there is something with Sarah's voice actress and the Fred from Scooby-Doo. For example, they both have the same last name. Rear Jones, Fred Jones. Coincidence? I actually don't think so. Since one's a real life breathing person while the other is just a fictional character. Okay, here's my arm rule mention. In Scooby-Doo Haunted Holidays, um, Fred... Which came out in 2012. Um, Fred asks Shaggy and Scooby to quick think about food and go chase the basement hall. Him and Daphne were checking that. Then there was also a time I think on Liberty's Kids. I can't remember which episode, but there was this one time when James asked on Reed if he would stop thinking about food for once. And actually help them out. So yeah, I'm calling that one. That's my horrible shit. Finally, the number one, probably most shocking reference of all, is this. Ari has been in episodes like these four, which are obviously to show her around the world. And I have begun to fight away the people, and born for an equal. That's right, folks. The lovable, but no one wants to deal with character. I can four times. Which I thought was really stupid. I wish the creators would never have any intention on doing that. But maybe it was because the creators found Henri boring? I don't know. But in the early episodes, I was giving you where your friend Daphne were not on screen as much. And then it was time to solve the mysteries because the creators just found them. Both of them were quote unquote boring. Which, to be fair, I don't think Fred or Daphne was ever intended to be boring characters, and neither was Henri. Then again, everyone's entitled to their own opinion. Oh, well, there you guys have it. Leave a like on this video if you think these two series should collaborate together to bring crossover between Liberty's Kids and Scooby-Doo. Anyways, that's all the references to Scooby-Doo from Liberty's Kids I can remember. I'm glad it was 10 of them, plus an honorable mention. Please don't be shy to leave a comment down below on which reference, if they will let me comment. Reference was the most shocking to all of you guys. And, well, there you guys have it.